Well, good morning. Wow. What a beautiful group we have today. It's a beautiful day, even though it's rainy, because rain is, is awesome. I love the rain. Love it when it rains. I love walking in the rain. And this is the kind of day where it's warm out. You walk in the rain and just get saturated by God and His blessings and all that, that we have to do with that. So let's just pray this morning and invite Him. He's already here. Let's just invite more of Him. Father, we just thank you this morning for who you are, for who we are in you. Lord, we thank you for that place in your heart that you've made for every one of us to rest in. We thank you for your presence being so precious today. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are moving on hearts today. You're moving on hearts today for what we're going to talk about. God, you're going to touch people today. They're going to be healed today. Their hearts are going to be healed. Their mind, their will, and emotion is going to be restored. Their soul, man, is going to be restored today. To how heaven designed it. I believe that with all my heart. Praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, so we're going to talk today about um, forgiveness. Some of you might have some issues with forgiveness. Um, but I want you to know today is 9-11. And I have intentionally forgiven on this day. It's one of the hardest days that, that, that I know that we've been through as far as in my life, in history, in my life, 9-11. To watch the towers fall. I remember where I was the moment that I heard the first tower and the moment I heard the second tower fall. And then there wasn't, no, there wasn't forgiveness in my heart then for this situation. But there is now. Because I've come to know from that point to this point who I am in Him. And how much He has forgiven me and how much He has placed that forgiveness on me in my life. And I know this morning that every one of us have been through a lot of things in life. Like a lot of stuff. We could all sit here and tell our stories of what things we've been through and, and how it hurt us and how it wounded us and how it tore us down and how, and how it made us build these walls that no one could penetrate, not even the Holy Spirit. We've all got those kind of stories. But do we have forgiveness in our heart that made the walls go up, that made the trauma happen? And then though sometimes we did things to other people and caused things to happen to other people, but also we have had other people do things to us. Some horrible things. I'll share a couple of my stories. You guys know some of my stuff, but I can sit down and give you a hundred days worth of stories of what I've been through in my life in a short period of time when I was a little boy. And I remember there was a time that, that I, was, I was at my stepmom's house and my little brother come up and he, and he showed me this little cap gun that he got. It was one of the ones that you break open and then you put the caps in, you close it back. And I broke it open. And he started screaming because he thought I broke it. He ran to his mom, my stepmom, and he told her, he said, he broke my gun. And she grabbed the belt and she beat me. I mean, beat me black and blue from the bottom of my legs to the top of my shoulders, black and blue, like some kind of beating that would put someone in prison. That's how I was beat that day. And all because of a misconception of a gun being broken when it wasn't. And she said, if, if you tell anybody, I'll do it again. I never told anybody, but my sister saw me get dressed one day and she saw the bruises on my back and my legs I saw this woman a few years back at a funeral first thing I did is went up in love on her and tell her how much I love her see because Jesus has shown me my life he's shown me that, that I was that man at one time I was that person at one time that did things to other people. And now my heart is that they would forgive me of the things I did to them. And because I have this relationship with Jesus, it don't matter whether they forgive me or not, I am forgiven by Him. 
But how much more wonderful it would be if, if I was forgiven by them as well. So in, 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 in every aspect of life, I try to, if the Lord shows me someone in my life that I did something against, I want to I go to them. I want to ask for their forgiveness. And likewise, I remember a time I was in a store and I'd seen this girl that in school, I made fun of her in school all the way through school because she wore a dress and wore her hair up. Man, I tell you what, I saw her and Jesus hit me. Remember, we've been talking about lordship. We've been talking about if he's, he's Lord of all or not Lord at all. We've been talking about if you're going to make God Lord, then anything he points out in your life, you must give to him. Anything, it doesn't matter what it is. You must give to him. And so, so I see this girl and he says, you need to go apologize to her. I mean, I'm talking, I'm 40 years old and he's saying, you need to go apologize to this girl that I made fun of when I was 16. I said, okay. I went over to her and I said, I don't know if you remember me or not, but I remember you. And I said, uh, she goes, oh, Jason, I remember you. <laughs> listen, listen, this is what she said. She said, I've always prayed for you and I love you. <laughs> wow. And I said, I need to ask you to forgive me for making fun of you. And she said, I already did. The moment that you did it, I already forgave you. That's how Jesus is. The moment that you sin against Him, He's already forgiven you. Holy Spirit wants to convict you and show you that there's things in your life that He needs you to clean up. But when you sin, God has already forgiven you. So my story, all these different things we can go through, and I know you have stories. I know you have walls up, but today I would like for those walls to come down. I would like for Holy Spirit to be able to just come in. And take those places in your life. Those places of unforgiveness. We must forgive. We must forgive. 9-11. We had to forgive. We must forgive. It's one of the most valuable things in, in Lordship. Giving Him everything and then forgiving others who have sinned against you. You have your Bibles turned to Matthew 6, 12. Matthew 6, verse 12. In order for the Lord to forgive you, you must know how to forgive. This is something that Jesus is talking about when he's, his disciples are saying, how do you want us to pray? How do you want us to pray, Lord? When you ask the Lord how to do something, he gives you the instructions on how to do it. He means what he's saying. And he says this prayer and he gets to verse 12. And he said, and forgive us our debts. He's telling them how to pray. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We forgive those ones who are dead against us. Not just some things, not just a few things, but everything. Anything that's ever been done to you. I know that there's people that have uh, been abused, that have been sexually abused, that had things done upon them that, that sh no one should ever have to experience in life. And I know there's all these heart hurts and heartaches. There's been cheating and all these things going on in relationships. That doesn't matter. The happen doesn't matter. What, ha what matters is the forgiveness. Because it's going to be beneficial to you and to the person. It's going to bring healing to you and to the person. I'm not telling you you have to go hang around those people. But you do have to forgive them. Of anything. It doesn't matter. Anything. Verse 14 says, For if you forgive others of their transgresses, transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Then 15 says, but if you do not forgive others, then your father will not forgive you. 
That's pretty clear. That's pretty clear. Pastor Karen this week telling a story. Pastor Karen Smith was telling a story. She's in her house. She's on her knees at her at their, their, their kitchen. She's on her knees scrubbing the floor because she cleans the floors that way. I think that's how she processes. She's always cleaning toilets in the church and she's scrubbing her floor. And, and Todd's standing on the other side of the, the, the counter there, the island. And then and, and she says, um, oh! the Lord had brought to her her thinking about this individual the Lord said well you just did that last week you did that same thing last week and here she's like Todd's over there going what are you doing where you at and she said he's so he's grown so much he's so in prayer and in that whole set that that he said well just bless him his attitude is just bless him. Don't think bad thoughts about him. Bless him. We're not too old that we can't grow. We're not too old that we can't learn this stuff. We're, it's not too far gone that we can't forgive one another of the transgressions that each other have done to each other. We're not too far beyond that. Even if you are a Christian, you remember Peter said, what did he say? How many times do I forgive him, darling? How many times? Seven? Seventy times seven. Basically, he's saying it doesn't matter. We don't have to think about how many times or start counting them up. You know, there's a guy that walks down the road. Every time he walks down the road, he's got a clicker in his hand. I love him. Never met him before, but I love him. If you honk at him, he clicks. He just walks down the road. Got a clicker in his hand. I don't know his name even. Click. I always honk. Click. He's like, click. He just he holds his hand up like this the whole way. Click. Counting how many people wave at him. How many people? Click. Click. You know his name? I don't know his name. Click. Can you imagine doing that with sin? Can you imagine keeping track of, all right, let's see, uh, darling, she, uh, that's five times. You got two more. You're done. You know, I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine keeping track of all that? The enemy does. He wants to hold that stuff against you, but God don't. <laughs> not at all. I mean, I could not imagine. Click, click, click. Randy, you're, you're, you're done, man. You're over the limit. I'm done. Can you imagine what the, can you imagine if the Lord said that to you? You know what? You're on your seventh time. We're done. If, if it happens one more time, we're done. We're done. It's done. It's a done deal. Can you imagine what it would be like? How you would feel? How horrible you would feel knowing that God had said you have seven times and that's it and you're done? Can you imagine? I couldn't even, I can't imagine because it, it will not happen because He's already forgiven us. We have to claim. That forgiveness. We have to claim everything that he has for us. Ain't he amazing this morning? <sighs> forgive us our debts as we forgive them. Yeah. That's why I encourage you to set powerful people around you. <laughs> powerful people. You think, listen, Jesus knew the people he was setting around him. He set some powerful men around him. He knew they were hungry. He knew they were hungry. When they were out in the boat, he said, follow me. They followed him. Anybody watch The Chosen? You guys watch those at all? Man, just keep watching them until they get another series out. Just make that your background so realistic it's so true I, I, the, I love the part of Matthew how you just Matthew just just the part of Matthew and then finally Jesus just has that intimate time with him you know and, and he cries because Jesus has pointed out to him Matthew I love you he says that to every one of us he wants that intimate time you say I don't hear God but do you give him that time you give him that time for he can speak to you. He can say to you how much he loves you. You know, John, he, he identifies himself as the one who Jesus loved. He lived with the mother of Jesus. And you know, living with the mother of Jesus, yeah, I'm sure she was saying, man, John, he loved you, man. He loved you a lot. She 
constantly poured that into him. His identity was Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. So he identifies himself, the one who Jesus loved. That was his identity. I am the one who Jesus loves. You are the one who Jesus loves. You could write a book and identify yourself as that this morning. So what would forgiveness look like to you this morning? Your deepest, darkest, dirtiest, nastiest secret or whatever someone's done to you, the walls that you have up. What would it take for you to forgive this morning? Because we already know that if you don't forgive, you're not going to be forgiven. So you might as well really not even be in the church because you might as well go live, live your life how you want to live. Because if you're coming here with forgiveness, unforgiveness in your heart and not giving it to God, you might as well just go enjoy life the best you can without Him. Because that's what eternity is going to look like for you. But what about the thief on the cross? You remember the story? There's, there, Jesus is just up there and he's, he's, hanging, he's hanging up on the cross thinking of all of us. And he's thinking of us. Listen, what did He say? He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know that the Son of Man, Son of God is up here on the cross hanging. <laughs> they don't know what they're doing. Forgive them. But He was willing to die for you and I. That we could be forgiven once and for all. Claim that forgiveness. Check this out. So you got these guys on each side of Jesus. And one's saying, listen, if you're really Lord, if you're really Lord like you say you are, then get yourself down off of here and get us down with you. And the other one's saying, man, shut up. This guy didn't do anything wrong. We did. We deserve what we're getting. But he didn't do anything wrong. So stop. And Jesus caught his attention. Because see, Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. And that caught the attention of, of this man over here. And he said, listen, we have not did, we, he hasn't did anything wrong, but we have. And Jesus looked at him and he said, today. Why? Because of his faith. Today, he recognized that Jesus was Lord. I believe that that guy would have come off the cross right then and lived. He would have changed his life clear around for Jesus. He would have been sold out because he had an encounter on the cross with Jesus. He had that encounter with Jesus on the cross. And I believe that if he stood off the cross and he got, they did let him down, he would have flipped his life around. But what caught his attention? The forgiveness that Jesus had. <laughs> Forgive them. They didn't know what they do. And he said to him, today you'll be in paradise. Today you'll be in paradise. What a marvelous thing. Can you imagine what it looked like when Stephen, when Stephen was, was, was there and, and all these guys are around, they're getting ready to hammer on him. And he's saying this stuff. He's like, I see, I see the Son of God standing on the right hand. Of God, and he said, I see him. And these guys are so mad, they didn't want to hear anything he had to say. So they're plugging their ears, they're stopping their ears from hearing what he had to say. And he said, Listen, right before they stoned him, he said, Father, forgive them. And I believe that that caught Saul's attention that forgiveness because you got a man that's standing here and in his mind he's thinking that that what he's doing is right because of his belief system was tainted and he felt like this is what I'm doing is right so he's standing there and all these men are coming they're throwing their coats down at his feet and he's standing there like a soldier would and they're throwing their coats down and he's not saying a word and he could he could stop it at any moment but in his head, he's thinking, he just forgave me. He just forgave me. And I'm stoning him. And they stoned him to death. But I know that resonated with Paul, Saul, at the time. 
And then he goes on the road to Damascus. His intentions are is to kill every Christian that he could kill. That was his intention. But Jesus met him on a road. He's furious. He's going, I know that was going through his mind. I just got forgiven by a guy. I, was, I mean, could you imagine stoning someone to death and that person looking up? Can you imagine the person that abused you and you looking up to them and saying, even now, I forgive you? What that would do to them in their life? How their shame and condemnation would fall away and how they would be able to step into a relationship like you are? Can you imagine what that would look like? Try to imagine every person that you've got an offense against. And you go up to them and you personally say, you know what, I know you did this to me and it was so horrible, but I forgive you. Because my Father's forgiven me. Can you imagine what that would look like? How that would change their life? It changed the man on the cross's life forever, for eternity. Paul's life was changed. He met Jesus on the road to Damascus. He met him there. If we can have an encounter with Jesus, I believe he wants you to have an encounter with him this morning. You can have an encounter with man and it might stick for a little while. But when you have an encounter with the master, it'll stay. You can have an encounter with the world, with the church that might stick for a little bit. We talked about get on that level one, ask Jesus to come in your heart and climb up that ladder and you're on step one. Ask Jesus to come in your heart and the world is so close and you, it's easy to step back down into it. Or go to level two, standing on top of a stool like I did, fighting against the things that God wants from you. When, when he has eight things he wants to take from you and you only give him four things, him not being Lord. This could be one of those things that you're holding on to. Forgiveness. Paul was so turned around. In a moment, he went from a murderer to royalty. From a murderer to so loved by God that he tried to save every Christian he could. God wants us to have that kind of an encounter this morning. An encounter of forgiveness. So let your walls down this morning. No matter what has happened in your life, let your walls down. No matter what you're not getting from God that you think you're so deserved to have or you think you should have or what has happened in your life, what was taken from you, what you feel like was stolen from you, no matter what it is. I promise you when you have an encounter with Him, none of that will matter. None of that will matter. None of the stuff that happened to me mattered. None of the abuse to my whole childhood None of that matter. None of it. He matters. Most, He matters. Let's stand. simple this morning if you don't forgive you're not going to be forgiven but when you do forgive freedom is going to come so I know when you watch the TV show and you see something happen to a woman or a guy seeing something happen brings back those thoughts that woundedness that brokenness that soul man that was fractured at that moment But it can come to a point of 
that fracture can become a testimony of how you forgave and how God healed and how God touched you because of that moment. Your fracture, wounded soul can be made whole once again. And all those components from, from a child, I had to go clear back. Tammy knows I had to go clear back. It's even a little two-year-old hanging out a two-story window by, the, by a nail with my shirt. Spiders thrown into my, my crib. I had to go back and I had to go to those places. And I had to forgive in those places. It might take some process. It might take some time. But in the instant, you can have an encounter with Jesus and all those things can be wiped away. Your life can be made new. Forgiveness can take a man to paradise. Forgiveness can make a murderer stand with a king in royalty. Forgiveness can take you to a place of peace and of joy, of happiness. Forgiveness will do that. It'll free you. It'll free you. Sometimes it's hard because I see things and I, and I basically I see everything that you guys have been through. Any person that stands in front of me, I, I sort of show me what they've been through. And I know and I see and I understand. And I know it hurts. I know it hurts. But we have to get past that. God is building an army of people that need to be free from every single thing that this world has thrown at them. He wants that for you this morning. He wants you to have an encounter with Him this morning. So as the music goes up and the altars are open, if there's unforgiveness, if there's someone in the church here, go to Him. Ask for forgiveness. Or go to Him and forgive Him. If the Lord's showing you that. Shelly has something she wants to share. And then, I think... I shared this at the last water immersion service. Uh, we have a sweet friend, Kate, that lives on the north side of Indy. And um, she attended the women's conference in Dawsonville, Georgia at Christ Fellowship back in January. And the first time she experienced Jesus in the water, um, she went in, she had a lot of uh, bitterness and unforgiveness. And it was towards her father. He was an alcoholic. She didn't have a great upbringing. Um, just held that anger, you know, in her. She said she literally um, got in the water and she was kind of in a fetal position. And she said God took and healed everything. When she come up out of that water, she called me and she said, she just called me about a month ago and asked this. She said, could my act of going in the water and choosing to forgive, could that have set my father free? because she went to Illinois afterwards about three weeks later and her dad was totally different. Everyone in the family could not believe the change in her father. And I said, well, of course that makes perfect sense. You choosing to forgive, God just broke and severed. It really is the first time I have ever heard of a situation so quickly seen of, of the hurt you know, the anger, holding unforgiveness, and then she's seeing it full, you know, 180 degree difference. The mom ended up, she, she found out the mom could speak in tongues and had received her prayer language years earlier, but kept it a secret. She, she her mother would war for this husband. Um, there was even a secret, or really a lie, that the, the dad believed with the mother pertaining their marriage and that was even healed the next morning when they went to visit three weeks later so I'm saying you know seeing that so quick that all happened last January and February and she's still processing but giving God glory because there's such a transformation in her father everyone even her children saw the difference when they visited so you know 
let things go and just God is so God is so faithful yes. and um, ready to restore. You know, I always say his favorite thing to do besides salvation is restoration in relationships. So yeah. it's you. true. Thank you, Shelly. I felt like the Lord said before you come to the altar, listen, I don't care about how many people are up here. Number don't matter to me. You can do what you're going to do. You're going to anyhow. But he said there's someone in here, maybe more than one. Who have a little bit of a grudge against God. You're mad at him for something. You're going to be the first one to come and pray. And everyone else is going to follow suit. That's what he said. If you have something you question God about. I'm going to give it to him. Don't worry about the people around what they're going to think because we've all been there. I've been there many times. Come, ask him to forgive you because he wants to. Come on, he said you would come. So come. Come and pray. Come and ask him. Come. He loves you. He wants you. He wants relationship. He wants to be intimate with you. Hold him. Forgive yourselves. Forgive yourselves.